Hello everybody and welcome to today's episode of Content and Creations. Today we're going to be trying to get back to the whole point of the show to have half of it specifically focused on awesome amazing machinery and, and interactive stuff that people have made and then the other half of the show to focus specifically on beautiful wonderful builds out there so you know what before i actually go forward i kind of want to bring back up that title slide for a moment now this i'm not going to say by any means that these were the absolute best but going through some of the screenshots from last week's the uh ogre competition entries and seeing what the final results look like that's just amazing right there everybody i mean look at that look at that that's nuts the uh, the amount of you know detail and and the the size and scale the quality of it the use of lighting and the variation that they all came from the same style guide and they all have their own unique flair to them while all seeming very very uh, consistent with one another so you know the 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 creation side I think the beautiful stuff people are making it is pretty awesome now uh, I know maybe uh, even as much as two months ago people were saying no nah, we still don't have the tools to make things that are truly amazing and landmark yet and I disagreed but uh, I think we're starting to prove now that we really do have the tools to make some truly amazing stuff here in landmark and it's just the beginning this is still within the first year of us having our hands on it. The end of the month here basically marks the, the end of the first playable uh, year of Landmark for anybody who wanted to get in during the early access. But anyway, we're going to uh, get into the stuff here. Pie Wing, hello, how are you doing? i um, sure there's some other folks out there lurking. I uh, put out a tweet if you folks want to give that a retweet and get some more uh, some more eyes on the show here. That would be fantastic. Put that up maybe about 25 minutes ago. Maybe I should put out another one here pretty soon. But the, um, the amazing stuff that um, we've been able to do with linking and triggering. I'm sure if anybody was around for the uh, New Year's celebration that Dave Jordson did, the ball drop thing that he did was... Pretty spectacular. <laughs> hey, cold night. It's good that you're lurking because I definitely want to give you a visit here today. So, you might be wondering, what the hell you're looking at? Yeah, you might be thinking, well, it kind of sort of looks like some weird version of bowling or something. And you're not wrong. <laughs> I will send out another tweet real quick. Jerking and twerking. <laughs> Lurking, jerking, and twerking. All right. Nakupenda, Shadow Scout, Dorkish, and of course, Cold Knight. Welcome, welcome. So, a better explanation instead of just standing here and, you know, gawking at this machinery here. So basically, the way it works, and uh, once it's all configured, I hopefully can get it set up the idea I initially had is that you would stand on the approach side, you would pick the path you want to shoot, and then you sword charge across uh, the different little panels you hit along the way to determine what pins you will actually knock over. And this part that I'm standing right here is basically the one that kind of drives the action. So that switch underneath, um, this gets moved into the on position when a player enters this area that takes any spinners that these spinners down here that were uh, active and uses them to turn the pins on or basically knock the pins down um, so once you finish taking the first shot the launcher will knock you back over here which 
reset the lever down here so it can push the uh, the remaining pins in the next part. Um, and then you make another shot if you need to, of course, if you didn't already make a strike. So you would basically do the same sort of thing. And, you know, it would launch you back. I still haven't gotten all the measurements and everything completely perfect yet. And there might be some other considerations because the sword doesn't go the same distance if you're kind of angled down a little bit versus going straight forward. So it makes things a little bit weird. But once the... Um, Oh yeah, and there's also the frame indicators over here, so... Uh, once the frame is finished, people just have to pull this lever a couple of times and that resets everything, that resets the pins and stops all the machinery, gets this back to the first frame position, and you can go after another shot. Hey, Look at that. <laughs> yeah, so that's... Um, that's what I've been working on. Oh, and if you just um, if you just touch this or whatever, and you don't touch the back, you can still just use the lever and reset it. I mean, the 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 lever resets all basically. So that's one of the things that I've been working on. And this is after having seen that Dave Georgeson was working on a bowling alley. I was like, well, he's got more of like the the machinery part, like or the 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 you know user interface. I actually want the playable part to it, so that's what ended up coming out of it. Now here I've got a conveyor belt sort of idea. Basically, this little angle is supposed to push them up, and then when they come around this way, this little angle is supposed to push them down. So it's supposed to be a one-way conveyor belt. Now after kind of working with it, realizing not only is the timing really, really difficult to get set, and it doesn't actually transfer you from one area to the next, you also have oddities like this one crawling back across the top and, you know, some other things. And it would really take, you know, this is only 200 voxels wide. It would literally take, uh, or excuse me, not 200, this is 20 voxels wide. Uh, all two claims uh, just to make one seamless moving platform or moving uh, conveyor belt using the glass movers or the, uh, the regular movers like this. So it's not going to work. It's definitely not going to work. But it was worth checking out and trying. Over here on the uh, the community board, I have one quarter of my area here, the community linking and triggering zone, is this lovely little stoplight system. Now, if I remember correctly, this is all I need to do. Is that right? No. I think that gets it back in back in action. Let's see. Okay, that got it going again. So times it, switches the light, times it, switches the light. Now I gotta say this is gotta be the worst. This has gotta be the worst light ever. You have just as long stopped as you do waiting on yellow as you do in green. Uh, this this is not a safe light. This is gonna cause traffic accidents. Just um. Just saying. <laughs> Kitty1317, hello, hello, Carissa Realms, welcome, welcome. Good to see you both. So, this was kind of a, a talking gate idea that I had talked about a few times, and I, I want to do it, but ultimately I'm waiting on the state machine. Now, we're going to be getting conditionals. Uh, David talked about that a bit. And uh, conditionals are basically like if then statements. Right now, we have kind of like a wonky variation of binary and binary with time delays. It's not really a full a full fledged system to let us do all the stuff we need to do. Once we have the ability to create a state machine, that's basically when you know this is the state that's going on, run these things. When this is the state that's going on, run these things. It's it's basically something you'll do for like a character in a video game. So uh, let's say the state is using the, the label, the number 10, for when you're standing still, or 20 when you're getting hit. So when you're getting hit, the state changes to 20 for a moment, and you go through all the getting hit actions, and it processes everything. And then at the end of that, if everything's good, it'll just revert you back to state 10, the um, you know standing still and, and being idle. So... Same sort of thing with this. I'd love to be able to have that sort of technology. I believe we will eventually get 
uh, state machines to allow us to make that sort of stuff. So basically, it's um, it's a talking gate. You know, we got different mouth positions here. And if one part's not completely finished moving before the next part gets started, sometimes the uh, fan won't want to move to uh, get it going. But once again, it's a very basic system I'm using here. I could also use lights and it would probably be a little bit snappier. But some of it's partially because of the delay that things won't take effect until the uh, portcullis are finished moving. <laughs> yeah, seriously, Dorkish. Um, Kitty1317, you might need to go into the landmark user files and change your frame rate to 30 FPS. I had to do that. It had a, it was targeting 250, and when multi-threading came in, that basically ate my entire system. So I had to kick it down to be able to broadcast. They say that no tasted, got no tasted. Terrible. Yeah. Okay. And then I, I suppose other features can be added for a, um, like a, a door that can be flopping back and forth as a tongue or something like that. <laughs> uh, Kitty1317, that is in the landmark beta folder. You can search that on your uh, start menu and locate the user options text file inside there and the first set of options is set max uh, maximum FPS you want to change that to 30 and then give it another try so there's a people mover Metallical made a flat one um, and then Dave Georgeson made one that was at an angle smoke jumper and I was like well these are awesome I wonder if you can make it smoother or faster if you add in a counter rotating one because they were just doing it with the, the ones going in the single direction and it looks like it's theoretically possible, but I just didn't have the time and patience to line everything up because sometimes props and things that you're trying to paste and tweak will just jump. It's some weird things with the axes. They're, I'm sure they're going to fix it um, very soon, probably. But yeah, that's just some of the basic leaking and triggering stuff I've been working on. Uh, Cold Knight, are you, uh, are you ready for a visit? Because I would love to take this party over there and show people the amazing stuff you've been working on. I have a bunch of places to visit here. Uh, Oil's Juggernaut build is pretty awesome. Cold Knight's got some amazing stuff. Diamond Beard had some amazing stuff to check out. We, uh, we visited that um, on New Year's when people were hanging out with Dave. Dave Georgeson, by the way, was hanging out with everybody during um, during the New Year stuff. Yeah, Cold Night, that's true, but the linking and triggering stuff is more the focus right now. We'll come back to look at how pretty this stuff is later. But right now, I just want to focus on the, uh, the functionality of things. It's up to you. We can hold off if you'd like. Um, I've got a lot of places to check out. In fact, yeah, why don't I... Um, why don't I head to Diamond Beard's place first, and then we'll uh, we'll head to Cold Nights. <laughs> 
Black. Hmm. Maybe I should have held this off for the second half. I thought there was more linking and triggering stuff over here, but maybe I was thinking of a build nearby. Well, while we're here, let's just check it out. Show off what we got. So. Got some awesome vehicles here. Got a, um mounted uh, missile launcher sort of thing kind of reminds me of the uh, the enforcer from planet side one it's pretty cool got the uh, better ram little thing on the front there got a few little chains to tow some stuff yeah tow launcher oh yeah cold night <laughs> you know so, you just put your eyes up to there and aim it around and take the shot. Tow gun jeep, gotcha. Over here we have, um, you yeah, know, I bet these are all probably uh, uh, things in the likeness of actual vehicles. So, if you know what it is, definitely say it. I really like the, um, you know, the attention to detail that went into it here. You've got the, the rear entry hatch here. You've got the, the top entry. It's pretty cool. I guess this is where you know people would be sitting waiting to be deployed out of it. There's a little transport. <laughs> I guess this is not where you're piloting it from? I guess so. That's pretty cool. I mean, it's a small space, but it definitely feels like a space that someone would be able to uh, operate and use for, um, you know, getting the thing around, piloting it, deploying people. It's pretty cool. So... I'm sure, like I said, if you folks know the uh, the tanks that these are meant to uh, kind of look like, you'll uh, shout them out here. That's really neat. I'm not sure if these are meant to move or if those were, um, like, if those are supposed to be, like, blast hatches or something. But either way, that's pretty cool. We've got the, um, like, a little mine inside of here. And that's what that explosion came from. <laughs> oh, I guess it's in the tip. So, using the um, the the cooking pots here for the hatches, that's actually pretty neat. The uh, the lids to the pots. This I don't believe you can actually go into. You can just kind of hang out for a photo opportunity. Yeah, Cold Knight. It is pretty amazing that you can actually get inside of that thing. It's honestly just about ready to uh, be be deployed out into the world of Landmark. And then this, uh, this big old beast here with a couple of big old cannons. Is this like some sort of bombardment or artillery weapon, I'm guessing? It's got a couple of machine guns on it, it looks like, so it doesn't really look like it's going up and engaging people directly as much, if I'm not mistaken. Or maybe it is something that gets all up in people's faces. <laughs> cool stuff here. All right. What uh what time of day is it over there, cold night? Has it um has it swapped over to nighttime yet? It's pretty cool. Oh yeah, here's the part. The um <laughs> some emergency lights and stuff on it. That's great. Little truck to tow stuff around with. 
<laughs> using cushions as tires. Pretty cool. So nifty. Command and Conquer? Gotcha. How you doing, Mellow Melon? All right. I'm going to do a screenshot of this before I get going because that is how we do things here. Courage Levy. Let me get the location. Sci-fi base. All right. And now to tap spacebar constantly to make sure we don't splatter. <laughs> Fun stuff, Dorkish. Fun stuff. Hmm. Seems like everything's uh still loading in right now. what ancient dirt looks like on the surface. I haven't seen it in a little while. Oh, fancy, fancy. Oh, there it is. Hooray! Howdy good. How's it going? Gotcha. <clears throat> so we got a lot of awesome stuff. This is a complete redesign, 
completely different than the previous facility. A lot more metal, a lot less uh, plastic and polymers and stuff. This, this is where the action's at right here. So, let's use the elevator. Okey-dokey. Very nifty. Now... I see. So now that the blue light's on, the doors can close. So the lights basically tell you what phase, what state everything's in. That's pretty nifty. So let's um, let's actually look at what's going on here. Basically, there's. There's a lot of stuff. Like, let me let me kind of first show off one of the neat features that's that's set up here. Is there's a little reset switch. If everything breaks, you can actually go back there and flip that a couple times. So there used to be um, levers to uh, time everything. They've actually been switched out to fans. So here I'm gonna press the button here and then. Uh, so this one got set like this turns off so that kind of starts the sequence and this sequence is basically for moving the uh, elevator to the down position and keeping the door open then uh, press the button again here it swaps back over now the back one there the the other half is on and that's closing things down moving the elevator up waiting the appropriate amount of time and then stopping that's what this is actually here for I forgot to say this is actually the um, the timing for the elevator make sure that it starts and stops at the proper intervals because the thing with the movers we have right now they don't really have any functionality to tell them to start stop other than just activate and deactivate. The, fam the fans are there to make sure you can't spam the buttons and mess up anything. Um, the levers used to hide, yeah. So this is a really neat system. The way this is all working out, the timing and everything, because it works pretty perfectly. I don't know, I haven't seen a desync yet, but I also haven't sat around and used it for a while. But I'm guessing is the same button rigged up pretty much for everything? Like the the green candles are they all basically the exact same thing? Okay, cool. Yeah, they are. They're all hooked up to the first fan. So this is this is a really neat system. Um, you know, uh, just a single floor elevator with the tools that we have right now. It's pretty exceptional. Yeah, Dorkish, I'm sure they're going to add a prop elevator. But for now, I mean, this is, this is some pretty exceptional work. The left fan turns the right fan off, which starts the whole thing. I gotcha. 
cool. Yeah, when the button's pressed, it'll, I guess, switch the position of these, and when these get their position switched, it starts this whole sequence to move everything and then open it back up. It's pretty cool. So what do we have over here? <laughs> That's pretty funny, actually. Oh, that's smart. <laughs> that's really funny. So if you use the tribladed fan in there, you could have an even higher frequency if you wanted. I don't want to stand on it because then everyone's going to get dizzy. That's really cool. Tribladed was too fast. I could see it. I could see that. And we have the counter here. So it's 55 right now. Now it's 56. Now it's 57. Now it's 58. And I can't remember. Does reverse order work too? Yes, it does. 59. And now it's 60. So what's going on here is the the counters are actually corresponding to what lights are on. So we have a simple counter system in here. Basically, every time you go through, it moves the ones over. And then once the one finally kicks over, it goes up here and starts moving a 10. So this is scalable. You can have a counter as big as you want. Yeah, exactly, Dorkish, and to start to understand some of the things to, uh, uh, some of the features that we're going to want to make linking and tricking easier to work with, for sure. Because it's, this is the first iteration of it. It's very simple, but even with this, we've been able to do some fun stuff. So let me, let me demonstrate here. Thank you very much. What was that? Zerador. Thank you very much. Welcome, welcome. So, let me just kind of walk through this a couple of times. So you see, that just kicked that over once. Every time it's passed through. So it's 74 now. Uh... So it's 74 now. There, 75. And the lights um, you know, continue to change and correspond with it. So each one of these is linked up to this set of stuff. So when once one fan goes on, it shuts off the previous one's lights and turns on its own lights. Um, and likewise with these ones, the, uh, the same sort of thing, just it's one digit over because these ones are configured to this set of lights. So really it could be done, like I said, scalable as many times as you want. Oh, it's just the light on off delay? Gotcha. Oh, you can move faster than it updates, but it always updates correctly. That's awesome. It did just go up a whole bunch. That's so cool. Digital clocks, everybody. So this could be used if, you were, if you're making like a, a sports-themed, like a, an arena or a, a stadium or something. To be able to keep score. It's pretty neat. Pretty neat. Thanks for showing this off here. Uh, what else do you have going on? I I remember you were working on some uh, some gnarly voxelmancy down here, but uh, 
I don't remember if there was any other linking and triggering out like that. Pretty sure that was most of what you were working on, right? Cool. All right, Cold Knight. Thank you very much for showing this stuff off. Pretty awesome. Working on an analog clock, but it was uh, taking a while to rig up. They look like the clock in your kitchen. That's awesome. Dorkish. Using shutters as the clock hands, that's awesome. I like that. Gotcha, Kitty thirteen seventeen, yeah. Landmark is a is a beast of a game to run. It does require top end stuff <laughs> it ain't no joke you know what uh, we'll probably come back here for the second half to check out the um, the aesthetic stuff hopefully it'll be nighttime by then so on that note, you're going to be moving on. Let's go to the Juggernaut. Well, Kitty1317, it's definitely something the Landmark community can help you out about. Uh, we have a lot of people who know a lot of stuff about computers. Really a wealth of knowledge in the community here. I know a lot about computers enough myself, so I'm sure, I'm sure we'd be able to help you get a really nice system set up for Landmark uh, based on uh, whatever your reasonable budget may be and get you enjoying the game along here with the rest of us. Because this is a lot of fun, and it's just getting better. Hmm. It's always during the night when I want to see stuff during the day, and always during the day when I want to see stuff. 
want to see what's going on tonight. It just happens to be that way. So, we have some awesome stuff going on with this thing. Now, I'm not sure which, which parts are actually able to be manipulated and which ones aren't. Because I can see a lot of them are rigged up so that they can't really be uh, be accessed, but a few of them can. Let's see if I can find the uh, main activator here. The yellow button? Really? I tried the yellow button. Yellow button. Oh, the yellow button does open the hatch. And so you got a little crew seat back here. And some uh, equipment. Very cool. Very cool. Is that that opens that whoops I don't think that's supposed to open oh no um, or maybe that's a piece that got rotated somewhere funny well Okay, so you can see a little bit of what's going on here. It's pretty cool. This is just a little little pod, just a little uh, separate sort of thing. This is where the action's at right here. So that's a close on exit, the, the area that you're in when you get through. And the same sort of thing, the uh, hatches to let you in and out. It's pretty cool. So this is the Juggernaut. It's got a lot of moving parts to it. You have this whole little mechanical system going on here. Up here towards the front, can uh, this is a toaster with levers in it? Well, not necessarily. I mean, some people might not know they're a builder until they try it. So this is to uh, open and close the front hatches. This here turns the lights on and off. See, we've got a couple other buttons around here, if I'm not mistaken. Oh yeah, that set of lights. Hmm, can't recall what that one does. We've got the uh, the tech forge up here, which looks totally cool. We'll, uh window up there, a little, uh, you know, some areas to kind of see out, get some light in. It's pretty cool looking. Drop the blast shields. How you doing, cereal? So that's not all there is to this place by a long shot. So there's some uh, some other neat stuff, kind of built in the little uh, consoles. Now let's kind of make our way through here a little bit because there's some other cool stuff to check out. I'm actually, before I go down there, let me look at some of the other things. So these actually operate the guns on the outside. Uh, you can't really see it so well from here, 
but there's sets of levers out there that will rotate down and up um, depending on which position this is in. So it actually looks like you can aim the guns. See, basically something like that. And likewise, this lever does the same thing for the other set of guns. It's going to be kind of hard to show. See so yeah, how there's that uh, that other upper set of guns here. That's what the uh, the other lever handles. So it's pretty neat. Definitely looks like something that uh, can kind of fly around and shoot stuff. We've got a medical bay here. It uh, it's got a lot of skulls in it. I don't think they do so well, unless this is like a um, oops. Some sort of organ harvesting bay rather than a medical bay. That's neat. A little thing to turn the light on and off inside. And more. So we have that teleporter. Let me get back into first person. Oh yeah, I believe this is uh, not a rear exit hatch, but it gets to the engine room. Maybe the engine room is lower down. Yeah, no, this is the uh, little cabin area. <laughs> Got a little periscope here. Looks like some uh, some communication stuff and. Stuff to kind of see what's going on from behind. Yeah. Not really much of a place to sleep anywhere other than that bed. And I guess people are probably sleeping in rotations here. Um... Dorkish, unfortunately we don't have uh, anything that goes ping yet. <laughs> we don't have any machinery that makes sounds and stuff and that's it. quite in that way yet, but I'm sure we will. Oh, that's why this is the candle. Eh. Wait a second. That lever? Can I open the door? No, the lever just starts and stops everything. Hmm. Well, that's kind of odd. Not really sure how you're supposed to get down from here. Oh, let's see if I can just squeeze through or something. Is it the green button? Oh. <laughs> All right, thank you everybody. Here we go. This is more of the uh, the engines area. It's a little uh, repair deck here. Storage. That's the um, uh, large hatch to kind of get everything in and out, like the uh, little uh, what's it called that we saw outside? Escape potty thing. Look like water heaters. <laughs> Where's the lever for this? Oh, yes. And then when you go out, it'll close behind you. So that's just an exit area thing for it to close. 
Now I'm gonna keep checking around this before I move down. So we got a little vault there. We got some boxes and some stuff blocking the area here. So it looks like there's more stored back there, but can't access it from this side. Another little bathroom area here. I would imagine if you're flying around and you've got a full sink of water, it kind of would look like that a little bit. It'd be kind of splashing everywhere. <laughs> yeah, Kitty1317, the monitor I'm using is only 100 bucks. Got the lights here. That's lovely. Just a lot of nice touches on this place. It's really well detailed. A combination of looking great and making great use of the uh, the props and leaking and triggering. Not necessarily in like a crazy mechanical way like the uh, the bowling alley or the the um the counter or the elevator, but you know, more simpler terms, just making things actually functional, actually making a place come to life because the things in it are usable and, you know, have some effect. So, it's good stuff. Let's go across to the other side. I think it was more or less the same. Yeah. Okay. What else? Is there anything else down here that I can show off? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure we're going back up and we're going across to the other area. Which is here. And this is more like kind of a crew hangout area. We got the sliding door here for the quarter. So I guess that was the captain's quarters we saw up top. Uh, yeah. Yeah, kitty. Hey, Fezikas, how are you doing, buddy? Oh, and Trosalot. Hey, hey, hey. I didn't even, uh, didn't even say hello earlier. Welcome, welcome. So, you know, it's, uh, simple lodgings. A couple of people have some, you know, I guess everyone has their little bookshelves or whatever. Not really sure. I guess those are some shutters to get some light. Or, uh, blast shutters. I don't really see how you open and turn it on. Maybe there's some switch in here somewhere. Yes. That turns that on, but it doesn't open that. Okie dokie. I guess they don't get to see the light. Oops. Oh yeah, that closes everything. <laughs> yeah, cold night. Um, I've heard mostly the same. It's just the um, the the fact that everything is refurbished parts or potentially is and. Uh, you don't actually get to own the warranties on everything. That's why I don't usually go with them. I'm more of a DIY person. Those shutters really do make great shelves. Got a little cauldron. Got some stuff cooking there. It's pretty nifty. Birthday cake! And some sliced... Uh, roast beef good stuff is this another bathroom yep 
bathrooms. And, uh, like a sauna or something. Oh, no, these are the showers. That's great. <laughs> Ooh, for ramen. <laughs> I don't know. I've never actually had a ramen that I truly enjoyed that came out of a microwave. I'm eating a ramen, it better have like a half a hard boiled egg up top. So they made their own toilets. Those uh, don't look like the most comfortable toilets, not gonna lie. They do not look the most comfortable. <laughs> so more of the, the sinks and the mirrors and stuff. It's pretty cool. Yeah, the microwave is great, and the fact that you can put stuff inside and it, uh, it's actually visible, it's pretty fun. So here's the other side of that storage room that we couldn't get to before. So you can just kind of get in and see what's around here. Okay, how's it going? Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the Neuro Network. Good to see you. So, we've got just storage stuff laid out, boxes, storage. Not that fancy. It's, it's a good detail. It's well done, but, you know, it's storage. There's no mice in it, so that's a good thing. I'm guessing pirate oil is the same oil that uh, made this here. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, it's an awesome build. There's so much amazing stuff going on with this place. I think we will exit out the back here. Cool deal. And it shuts behind you and everything. Oh, okay. I was wondering why the, the windows looked the way they did. I see. So it's the skull that you're looking out. That's great. Oh yeah, and the cannon does light up. I can't remember if there was a, a switch or control on the outside to access it. But if I'm not mistaken, it does light up and looks like it shoots. So here's once again what I was talking about with those guns that you can... Uh, change their position and they'll move at the uh, the same time so it looks like you're actually aiming them it's pretty neat those levers are useful for a lot of things you can see the uh, the blast doors on the outside here Where's that piece that we lost earlier? Oh, here it is. Let's 
Let's see, are you here? Oh, you are here. Frozen gnome cannon. <laughs> Ooh, I like those street lights. Those are nice. Uh, yeah, here, let me switch the audio channel on Landmark. It's going through my uh, uh, desktop speakers rather than the headset, and people won't really be able to hear you. There we go. Try it again. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, cool. Um, I might ask that periodically because sometimes, for whatever reason, um, apparently on my claim, the audio likes to bug out. Uh, Domino was out here the other day, uh, which kind of shocked me, and um, she couldn't talk. It was bugging out for her, and you know, Dave said that this voice chat stuff's pretty stable, so I must have a special claim. Uh, well, uh, keep in mind, it's proximity-based. The further you get away, the quieter it gets. Yeah, I know. I was standing up, like, as close as I am to you, and <clears throat> it wasn't working for her. Weird. She was... So, um, follow me. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Just see my, um, crummy little base. <laughs> um, look, at, look up under the tree, and you'll see a teleporter, and just grab all of that. It's, uh, to the left side. There you go. Okay, so I'm working on an engine for a uh, smaller, mid-sized uh, craft. And so if you come to this little uh, thing over here and stand on it, um, what you have is the controls to turn it on. <clears throat> um, and then once the control is on... That's awesome! You can look to your uh, left and a little door opened and you can hit the afterburner button. <laughs> so instead of using a logic gate uh, that I suck at making, that a lot of people are probably confused by, I just simply blocked the second trigger with a door. <laughs> that works. Um, you know, some of so the... So the way that works is when you hit the uh, afterburner, it, um, if you look up top, come up here. Uh, these, there's six doors here, and they'll open up immediately, and then they close one by one, and when it gets down to the last one, and it shuts, that's when the afterburner goes off, and so, if you wanted to put some role-playing idea behind it, there's no more air getting sucked into the engine, or extra air, for the afterburner. <clears throat> gotcha, that's really cool. But yeah, it's, it's pretty neat when you, um... If you hit the afterburner thing, you'll see all these pop open and then close one by one. <clears throat> and this looks uh, really cool at nighttime. I see. That's really cool. And um, and you can come down here and um, hit the off sequence. Just well, hit the switch again, and you'll see everything kind of reverse. That's really cool. How long did that take to set up? Um, I started. I made it yesterday, for the most part. Uh, today, I added the top part with the um, the vents and the afterburner thing. Um, but that was after man, I don't know. I wasted an hour and a half playing with a a logic gate, and I mean, I got it to work, but it didn't work as reliably as. I would have expected. <clears throat> so that's when I uh, said, eh, I'm going to get rid of this thing and I'll come up with a different solution. And it just dawned on me, duh. You know, well, what I was thinking was, you know, like uh, when you see the movies um, and, uh, you know, break glass, you know, either for the, uh, you know, the fire hose or for the self destruct button or whatever it may be. And so I thought, you know, I just need a break glass button for the afterburners and hell, just put a door there. It makes sense. Yeah, it's not working 100 percent. Yeah, it's not working 100 percent. It's not closing when I need it to close, um, but it's working for the most part. 
That's pretty cool. And then, of course, if it's closed with the afterburner on, it looks like it's burning. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really happy with it, though. I mean, it's. Uh, I, I really wish we had more uh, moving props, you know, sliding things. Um, like what I really want is a door that uh, where the hinge is on the short axis, you know, so you have this long plank that can swing open um, instead of these little fat doors, you know, where the, uh, it, the hinge is on the long axis. I know exactly what you mean. I agree entirely. Triangles yeah. are another one that I'd love to have, too. Triangular doors and other, other sorts of geometric shapes to work with. Thank you. In triangle, uh, we need... I'm, I'm bad at math and bad at algebra and all that crap, so forgive me. But I believe it's an isosceles triangle and an equilateral triangle, or, or a right, right angle triangle. Uh, we need basically a, a perfect triangle prop glass and prop glass with a right angle triangle. Because um, on some, some shapes you can make, um, I don't know how to describe it, but where the sides kind of angle out and the top and the bottom angle up, and when you connect them all um, together, it basically leaves these triangle shapes. Um, and I've tried to put, uh, well, I just hate voxel glass for uh, for anything that you're actually looking through. Um, especially because voxel glass uh, it hides emitter effects, whereas prop glass doesn't. Right. And I just think prop, I think prop glass just looks better. It looks cleaner. It's easier to see inside. Um, you know, and when you see somebody inside of something and you're on the outside and they're kind of moving around in there, it gives you a, a greater sense of it being real in a, in a way. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think we need some triangle prop class. Uh, yeah, triangle doors. Um, I know people have asked long before I came around, and I know I've asked for it, but uh, it would also be nice to get um, an aperture door, you know, like a James Bond kind of door, whatever you, whatever you call it, I call it an aperture, but, um, yeah, like a, a camera you know, shutter so, door. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Something that just kind of like spins open. Um, of course, sliding doors, we've all been, you know, asking for that. And, yeah. We can't just be using the sliding shag rug forever. That was actually one of the <laughs> variations of the, um, the bookcases that I had initially asked for. I wanted the sideways, the horizontal sliding bookcase. We only got the front and rear hinge. So hopefully we'll get that too at some point. Yeah, and I mean, you know, they, I know it's I know it's on their their list, and you know, um, the more I get to know Dave, the more I mean, I think he's into this as much as if not more than we are, and I know there's a lot of things that he'd like to see, um, but there's priorities, you know, and uh, and you see it all the time on the on the forums, you know, they have an update. And they release a bunch of textures, maybe some props, and everybody's freaking out. Hey, all we got was props. All we got was textures. I'm cool like, with that, man. Yeah, hey, don't man, complain. Give me, give me That's more awesome. More props. I'm cool with that. But um, and I can kind of see the community. You know, they they want to see the, the fight mechanics and all this other stuff. So it makes sense that they need to to put their efforts into the bigger systems. Um, you know, and then once that stuff is in place and dialed in, then they can spend their efforts uh, on you know, smaller things like, like props. But yeah, I'm really happy with this motor, man. Um, in nighttime, you can see the red, uh, and there's a red, one single red light orb inside uh, that reflects off of those, uh, uh, the trap doors, the square trap doors. It looks really, really cool at night because they, it looks like the metal is kind of uh, heated up, you know, from uh, the flame. Oh yeah, I but, can see uh, that effect actually. <clears throat> But the intent in, in building this, I've been wanting to make, you know, like on the other ship, um, it's fun and I'm happy that uh, people enjoy it, but it wasn't designed um, really with linking and triggering in mind. I mean, it kind of was, yeah, it, I, I kind of designed everything with the idea of, of it working, uh, but that thing was designed long before I knew that stuff was coming around, you know, so I didn't put that much thought into it. So. I, I had to change a lot and rebuild a lot of it for the linking and triggering system. Um, so this one, you know, this engine, I mean, this is starting with linking and triggering in mind first and foremost, which, I, again, I really couldn't do in the last one. And, um, you know, I saw a Jorg had made that, uh, that really cool giant engine. And the thing's phenomenal. I mean, it's got all kinds of crap going on. And yeah. I say, say I meant crap, to... not in a bad way, but uh, a lot of stuff going on. It's, it's pretty cool. I meant to visit um, that else? one again. What was the uh, what was the name on it? Uh, 
Um, I'm not sure. It's I, I would just look up his name and look for the giant engine. Uh, but it's it's an amazing uh, feat of engineering, if you will, landmark engineering. Um, and I'm sure it would look crazy cool on a six claim uh, ship, you know, or having multiples of those. Um, but uh, and I know he's going to put it in Player Studio. I intend on putting this in Player Studio. Uh, but this is going to be attached to a craft or something. I'm not going to sell it as a motor alone unless people ask for it. Um, <clears throat> but my only issue with his is that it uses so many emitters that are really hard to get uh, that I think it might deter someone from wanting it, you know. Um, I mean, that little pilot light flame emitter, those are hard to come by. I think I have four of them total. And I've been scouring for them every day. Um, and then, of course, all of the, the afterburner, whatever you want to call it, that uh, lava fire emitter, um, those are kind of hard to come by. And so unless you're in a big guild with a bunch of people that might have these things, you know, um, just laying around to give you, um, it's kind of tough right now to come across. Hopefully, I'm, I'm hoping that emitters become a recipe thing for builders. Uh, but I don't know if it's going to happen. So that being said, um, I designed this with a couple things in mind. Um, ease of obtaining props, you know, emitters, whatever, um, and using the least amount of light as possible so you don't get a lot of lag. Yeah, you know, I had someone at the ship last night, and she was um, she was apologizing because she was lagging out a lot. And I don't have a lot of lag up there or for myself, um, but. You know, if people are having that problem, then that's something I need to be uh, cognizant of um, for future builds, you know, to try to make it as friendly as possible for a, a multitude of uh, machines. And um, uh, and so, you know, again, just easier materials to come by, uh, you know, something that doesn't uh, doesn't hurt your play, you know. Yeah. And I'm not bashing his, if, you know, if, if anybody can hear me, man, I'm not, I'm not bashing his. I think it's an am amazing design. I mean... Uh, I think it's cool. I love how the sequence is stuff. There's a lot to it, you know. Um, but uh, just like, you know, Dave's claim, Dave's got a cool house and all that New Year stuff was cool, but the lag makes it kind of unbearable. Whenever I start getting a lot of lag, I, you know, half the time I just want to log out. Yeah. You know, screw it. And I think you know that's, I mean? it's something that they'll probably work on over time because right now it is just an area light. It, they'll go through walls, they'll intersperse with one another, and that just creates a lot of lag. So I think that's one of the things that they're going to probably look at uh, somewhere down the line is maybe more intelligent systems so the lights don't you know overlap as much or when they overlap it isn't as impactful or otherwise maybe just changing it so instead of being an area light that doesn't have any occlusion with walls and other stuff that it will actually kind of work like the spotlight and you know things will get caught on the walls and, and get stopped and you know, refract off or whatever rather than just going oh, yeah. through everything. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and something else I can do, like I was talking to, to Cold Knight. Um, he's been making a lot of really cool stuff, and uh, I go to his claim every other day. And Yeah, we were just over there, days. actually. Okay, yeah, he's his elevator, dude. Did, he, did you see his uh, his blinking light? Yeah, we saw the elevator, the blinking uh, light, the uh, the counter. Yeah, it's awesome stuff. Yeah, the blinking light, I've, I about lost it with the blinking light. I mean, that thing, it's just... It just looked cool. I tried to remake it, and I couldn't, I couldn't remake it for crap. That dude's got some wizardry, wizardry up his sleeve. But, um, well, did you did uh, you see how he did it? Yeah, well, we, I, was, I, I did the fan and everything, but I don't know what he did or how he aligned the, the fan to the orb because my light looked just like a normal light regardless of what I did. It, it, very little... Um, you know, blocking of it with the fan spinning. So I'll have to inspect it in, in, in depth and see what the secret is. But, um, but man, what was I going to say? We were talking the other day. Um, oh, um, uh, we want to see, um, he was bringing up that he'd like to see uh, basically, how, how did he say it? I guess light, light emitting devices that don't admit li emit light. You know, if effectively... Um, lumicite, uh, yeah. props or lumicite. Just yeah. something that affects the luminance channel, not an actual light output, for sure. Exactly, yeah. Uh, I think that'll go a long way. Um, you know, so. For sure. 
All right. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this thing. I like the the movement, all the little moving parts, and so hopefully I can make the rest of the ship as cool. Yeah, it's it should be pretty awesome. I mean, this this alone is probably gonna do real well. And honestly, I think something that they'll probably do at some point is, unless it's a super exclusive prop like a SOA Live 2014, um, one of those flags or whatever that you can only get for attending, um, something where uh, something even if it's hard to find, you buy the props along with the template. So you could spend five bucks to buy this as is and just have the template. Or you could spend eight bucks and you get the template and all the emitters and all the props. Yeah, and uh, yeah, hopefully that's something they do because uh, you know, for for a builder, I mean, it's it, it just doesn't seem to make sense to me to gate builders um, or or make it so that they can't build. You know, I mean, if if you've got an idea, then you should be able to build it. Period. Um, and if they're holding things back and it keeps us from building it or building something more fantastic, then that keeps people like you and your and your streamers from seeing it, you know? And you never know who's in your stream, man, that's not playing the game that might go, man, that's really cool, I think I'm gonna check it out. But if a builder's not making it, he's not gonna see it, he may not check it out. Right, for sure. Well, I think, um I got a couple other builds that I wanted to give a visit to, but it was uh, definitely great stopping and chatting with you. Hey, would you want to be on live feature rant one of these days? Because I, I can see we've got a lot to talk about on the subject here. <laughs> um, yeah, sure. I, I don't know what it's about. I mean, I've watched your stream a few times, but um, yeah, we can talk more in depth about it. Sounds good. Well, we'll, uh, we'll follow up after the show here. Cool. Well, man, thanks for coming by, and uh, yeah, I think it was just a, a George rocket or something, or George engine, but uh, yeah, go check that out again, um, and man, I don't know, have fun. For sure, thanks. I'm going to uh, actually head over there right now. See you later. See ya. Wait, no, I'm not going to leave yet. i got to take a screenshot of this. <laughs> well, turn your chest light off. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's two things I really want, man. I want to be able to either claim wide or area tool wide, but I'd like to force off um, light orbs, and I'd like to force uh, run speed down to walk speed. I actually wish we, wish we had five different speeds of walking, like jogging, fast pace, whatever. But... Um, yeah, I'd like to force that down because, like you've noticed in the in the ship up there, the, the juggernaut, when you're walking, you see a lot of cool stuff, and it's just easier to absorb. And to me, it feels more more epic in a way. It feels larger. Um, and then when you're running, you know, you're running past stuff, and you're missing doors, and you're running past the doors, and sliding across the floor. It just doesn't feel right. Yeah, it's. It's still definitely a work in progress. They, they've done a great job. Oh, whoops, it's not actually coming through. They've done a great job making the heroic stuff feel like really, really fast and strong, but you're right. It doesn't, doesn't quite have the same pace everywhere. It doesn't quite feel right in all the different places. It would be nice to have a little bit more control over that sort of stuff. And definitely light well, controls you know, on claim, for sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I would never want it to slow down someone's gameplay outside of my claim, but, uh, but the fact is, the, the faster you're moving, the bigger the content needs to be in order for you to absorb it in the same way that you would if you were moving slower, and it could be smaller. Um, and because, you know, contents that are the, the sizes at a premium and voxels are the premium and all that costs data and lag and whatever, you know, uh, it just makes sense to slow it down a little bit from the character perspective because that opens up a whole different world of possibilities. Yeah, I mean, if they really want to get deep with it, different movement speeds also affect your, your defenses and stuff. If you're at a full run speed or whatever, and somebody hits you, you're taking full damage, like, um, uh, was it Neverwinter and stuff that I believe had a system like that, versus if you're moving maybe about mid-pace, you're still a little bit more aware you're not going to you know just get ambushed all of a sudden when something hits you. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Makes it more realistic. 
another factor into you know your your playstyle. this sends off, we will get going. All right. Is this it? I don't think that's it. I think that, I guess that is it, isn't it? Let's head on over, everybody. That's right. It'll uh, it'll have to be a moment. Now, this here is also awesome. Is this a work in progress or is this finished? I haven't seen this before. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. back here for the other half for the uh, check out the beautiful stuff there we go why is it named so oddly by the way you just didn't want to change the name or keep it discreet or something or is that the name of it so Nubwinkle, um, some other places I was looking to go to is check out what Minkus has going. Uh, for the second half, going back and seeing what uh, Cold Knight's been working on in the upper half. And I'll get back to that place we were just looking at a second ago. And then um, Xanthia's Floating Island is amazing. So we'll definitely be checking that out. Is your workshop claim? That's really cool. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. This is your workshop claim. I thought you were saying the other place. It's like... Wow, that floating city is your workshop. That's a hell of a nice workshop. You know what? The engines look like Star Wars and the frame looks like Star Trek. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's what it looks like to me. The engines definitely look more Star Wars to me, and the uh, the rest of it, this looks like some sort of uh, it could even be a Federation ship, but uh, like something out of Star Trek, really. Lord underneath, how's it going? Welcome, welcome. So we are here to check out these engines. How's it going? So it's timed. You've got the little lights inside making their way up. We have to correspond on both sides. Or does it do the top and then the bottom? Nope, corresponds on both sides. Hey, <laughs> cold night. So we've got these uh, lovely engines back here. It's pretty hot. It looks really cool. It's it looks like a really really hot flame being put out from there. the uh, the configuration you've got with the it almost looks like um, ogre tables actually being used for the fitting there I think that is what it is you're using the, the ogre tables to um, kind of fit it and you've got the ethereum I believe that you're using for the metal very nice nice Fugazi <laughs> You know, he probably would have been a pretty good character in that, too. <laughs> we got all the little spinning fans and stuff going on in here. The, um... Things power and things and stuff. Got this whole little light system going on, too. That's really neat. It is amazing. It looks amazing because it is amazing. That's really, really neat. I like those. It's like a heat sink on the side there. Thermal exhaust vent. So cool. So cool. It's a really, really awesome piece of work. Is there an on-off switch to it, or is it pretty much always going? Ah. Oh, that's cool. So each of the engines has its own control panel. That's neat. That's so awesome. Need to link a control that works both at the same time. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a little interesting setting stuff up like redundant controls and systems because it's right now if you have a control panel like this, uh, even just to move it somewhere, you have to basically pick up the entire thing and kind of paste it all in place and hope it's all uh, where you need it to be because that's just how it is with linking and triggering right now. But yeah having a redundant system to work with both of them at the same time would definitely help out unless you want them to do things differentially from one another then it makes sense to keep them separate and then just have controls in the front to turn them on and off or something uh, 
Ah, it's pretty cool. Separately and at the same time, ideally. Very cool. Very cool. Oh, that'll be neat. Whole engineering room and weapons. That's really cool. Look good before you did a big paint. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's still pretty cool. Like the layout of it looks really cool. Oh, that's also pretty neat. Cool stuff. Nice. I like what you got going on here. It's really, really cool. Yeah, this definitely looks like uh, early progress here. Uh, Lord Underneath, I don't know how much linking and triggering actually causes um, impact so much as the fact that there's a whole bunch of different lights being turned on and off and there's like... What? 50, 60, 80 of these spinners going around on each one. So, a lot of moving parts in general is going to cause lag. A lot of lights and a lot of moving parts, regardless. Um, but if you have a lot of linking and triggering with things that aren't actually like a lot of moving parts at once, it actually shouldn't be that terrible. It shouldn't be that bad for performance at all. Cool, Matt Man, how's it going? I saw a bunch of people uh, come through, by the way, that uh, I didn't quite say hello to, but hello to all of you. <laughs> it's great to have everybody. So, I'm going to get a little bit of height, take a screenshot. Yeah, yeah, conditionals are definitely something that everybody is probably excited for. I'm excited for him. Courage Rapids. Mm. 
Let's get the location. It's going. Looks pretty cool from here. Nice, got a, a couple of air conditioning units. all the little fins and stuff in there yeah this is definitely having a lot lower performance than the ship by a long shot just a bunch of everything growing here and they're all growing out of these little uh cushion things. That's kind of neat. Got a water vader. I'll take you up to this half. Yeah, Fugazi, I'm sure Dave Georgeson's probably got ideas for a lot of that stuff that he wants to put in, considering, you know, he's been messing with this stuff too, and he was the one saying to me, yeah, it's all going to be a lot easier when we get conditionals. Pretty sure conditionals are coming. Yeah, this is pretty neat. Definitely, um, definitely higher impact than the, uh, the ship in terms of, uh, frames and such. I like the uh, light causing that kind of filtered look through the glass. From a while ago? Cool. It's pretty cool. Serador, conditional is like an if-then statement. Um, you know, if this is in this state, then this can go on, otherwise go on a different path. Or do nothing. You know, that sort of stuff. We're creating a state machine. Or, uh, there's a lot of different things. Or gates and gates. Yeah, it's basically basic programming and logic stuff. So... Sequencer looks for toggles, turn off and the controls that the switch is on. Yeah. Sequence of the engine only turns on effects that you want to use. Yeah, that makes sense. It'll be really nice. And it'd be a lot easier to make actual games in Landmark with that stuff, too. So... Let's see. It was... Minkus, I believe, whose place I wanted to visit here. I've been hearing some some good stuff coming from over there, but I'm really not sure which one's the one to visit. B 
Spear, Riddle, and Logic Gate. Very cool. Yeah, linking and triggering is going to be pretty awesome very soon. Linking and triggering, everybody. If this hasn't started getting you excited about linking and triggering, eh, I'm not going to say nothing will. Actually, quite the opposite. If this doesn't get you interested and excited, that's fine. This is just the very, 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 very beginnings of it. And even this is, um, I guess with some amount of programming background, I consider it to be, you know, simple to mediate com complexity unless you're you know doing some of the very very specific stuff like the logic gates because it's just not really designed for that quite yet they'll give us those but even for what we can do right now this is amazing stuff just the ability to time things and make them work uh, in a sequence adds a lot more to builds and adds a lot more to the functionality that we have than uh, previously So I believe at the end of the process for this end gate, it gives you this light here, and that's definitely, uh, or that's uh, essentially where your true or false comes from. Um, if I'm not mistaken, that's what we're looking at here. Now, I guess designing, you know, the actual logic of it by itself, that's not something I've messed around with as much. So it would be, you know, more having a uh, an explanation of what's going on here that would um, really help out. If uh, if anybody knows all this sort of stuff, that'd be great. But we're basically going to be getting a built-in version, so you won't have to spend what is that like thirty something levers uh, and all the linking and stuff just to make one kind of simple thing <laughs> it is simple and it isn't simple oh neat so they've got lights that go on and off here So what happens when the livers get all the way through? Does it close? Yes. Neat. What if I just want to shut it off? Nifty. Does that break it? No, it does not break it. Very cool. Cool stuff. So, what do we have here? Get the beer, no grappling, no flying. Where's the beer? Uh, 
As how do I start the challenge? Do I start on this side and not the other side? Hmm, okay. So is it a maze or is it just a thing? Ah, nifty. Okay. So what's that light do? And if it's just a matter of getting across there without doing any grappling or any gliding, that's easy. need to uh, come at it from down here with the full charge. There we go. And here's beer. Well, close enough. <laughs> what the? Oh! There's the rest of the game. I'm supposed to swing the camera over. That turns them on. When I walk out, it turns them off. Hmm. I'm not sure if everything's properly linked up here. But anyway, I beat it with a sword glide anyway, so. Friend to open. Oh, I gotcha. I guess it is a two-part thing, isn't it? <laughs> well, neat. So, I mean, it's possible just to use this to make something that's uh, uh, 
Weird puzzle. <laughs> Nifty. I was like, yeah, can you just copy it out of there? No. I can just type it out of there. Oh, I see. It's an X or X and or uh, not or uh, yeah 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 form not and and a not or yeah okay okay gotcha. So those were all a bunch of different logic gates. I was uh, not not interpreting it properly there. Cool stuff. All right, we're going to be looking to take a break here for a little bit. Um, I want to say it's going to be a 10 minute break, no more than 15 at most. Probably just grab a little stretch, a little quick bite to eat here and uh, we'll get back to it but before we leave for this break I'm going to get us to a different location to kind of hang out so let's get going So let me ask you folks, do you already have all the items that you want to need in Landmark aside from emitters? Do you already have all of the uh, the weapons and equipment that you want? Do you already have your your Delver's Grapplers, your Greater Light Stones, your Boots of the Zephyr? Because I've got kind of a small stockpile of stuff and I would love to hook people up if they need it. but. You know, if not, yeah, whatever. A lot of it was provided by various folks, like uh, Baby Cannon, Foofy Girl, and Game. And a lot of this stuff I've just collected on my own, because I kill a lot of stuff. There are no katanas yet. Just kind of leave things here. Come back in a little bit. All right. So we'll be back. I will see y'all in a few. We'll continue on with the second half of the tour, where we're going to be looking at amazing, beautiful builds that people have made. Not necessarily looking at the linking and triggering, though. If it has linking and triggering, we'll check it out too.
all right